what you hear because you love the Lord. And because you love the Lord, we can have a good time. That's all right? Now we can have a scripture by our deacon Paula. And we have a prayer by our chairman, Deacon Rick. St. Matthew, the chapter, we have the first verse. They shall the kingdom of heaven and be given to ten birds, who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. With that was foolish took their lamps and took their oil, took oil, took their vessels, took oil. And they took the wise, took oil and their vessels. With our lamps. Why the bridegroom carried the oil from the sky. At midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom coming. We will be with you. Say the question.
<laughs> well, let's go give a welcome. I know they're not visitors. They are at home, but I know many of you are sleeping on the couch or the front seat. They need to be put back on the bed. church amen. amen let the church say amen again amen. we greet you in the only name that matters the name of jesus to our worship leader dr thea to reverend evangelist crawford certainly to leading lady crawford we thank god for her this morning to our minister Lionel, to all other ministers of the gospel certainly to all of our deacon ministries our mother ministries and to all of you my father children it is certainly good to be here on the lord's day Amen. I just want to uh, recognize my cousin from Ohio. Amen. They know Ohio. They're here. We can stand at this time. I'm so grateful to God to have them. Amen. With us. Amen. This morning. And uh, they came in celebration of our cousin over the, um, this past Friday. We thank God for them still being in our midst today. I'm going to, um, at this time, uh, give way to Reverend Crawford. He's here, the Reverend Crawford, so they can bring us greetings 
on today. Amen. We are honored that you can come from 8 o'clock service until the next to come and bring greetings at this time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Truly, it is an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. I do give honor to my pastor, Reverend Frederick Crawford, to my husband and pastor, Reverend Rome Crawford, Dr. Padilla Benestamanos, and then to my first lady, Anthony Crawford, to the diaconate ministry in which I've served so many years with, to my Union Grove family. Amen. It's just a blessing to be back home. Amen. It is a blessing to be back home this morning. My husband stated, you know, that we were on our way to drop Bria home. I mean, school, and uh, certainly it's a blessing that God just redirected our paths, and we were able to come and to worship with you on this morning. Amen. It's just an honor to see all of your faces, and I'm just happy to be here, and I just thank and praise God for this opportunity, and may God continue to bless you all, continue to pray for us at the Day Spring Baptist Church, where God is doing and moving in a marvelous and mighty way. Amen. And we thank and praise God for each and every one of you. Continue to be blessed, and may God continue to bless you. Amen. We want to thank those that came out on Thursday for the water baptism. We had a great time here in baptism, and then we closed out on the 12 Steps to a Blessed Life. We thank God for our Deacon Patrick Crawford who taught a few of the classes for us, and we just had a blessed series. And we certainly want to thank all of you who are part of that series. We encourage the membership to please uh, get the book and read it so that you may grow and develop in not only your giving, but in your stewardship to God. It is a blessed life, and it's a blessed book. So we encourage you to do that. On this coming Wednesday, we will reflect on the book. Those who have testimony who want to share, you have an opportunity to do so on Wednesday. We have also be lifting up a blessed offering on that night. I have envelopes here. I encourage you, those that are here, to please take one, pray it over them, and bring them on this coming Wednesday that God may add a, a special anointing on your life. And then we uh, thank those that came out with us on Thursday night as we were the guests of the Greater Central Baptist Church. I want to certainly thank the Men Fellowship Force who did a fine job on Thursday. They blessed, they blessed us on Thursday. We had a great service on Thursday night, and we praise God for it. And then on Friday night, amen, this place is on fire. Amen. But the I am royalty service. We thank God for our sister Sheree Williams and our director of Stilanos. Uh, we had a time here. Our co pastor Sabrina McDaniel came in here and she came in here in a mighty way. And then me and Lady Crawford were the guests on yesterday uh, to the Antioch Baptist Church uh, luncheon for their pastor. And they had uh, co pastor uh, Cornelius uh, Watts, uh, Wallace. And she did a great job. On yesterday, uh, shook up the place there. And so we was blessed to be in that company. And God is just doing great things all over the world. While at the luncheon, it was interesting that a young lady came up, not to say a young lady, but a middle-aged lady uh, came up to me 
um, on yesterday, calling another pastor, and she said, I just wanted to shake your hand. And I said, you want to shake my hand? I said, I'll shake your hand back. And I didn't know what she meant by that. She said, you are my favorite TV preacher. I said, I, I said, I am. I am. She said, yes. She said, I don't leave. Stay in Manhattan. I don't leave my house until I've seen you on television. And I just told my pastor, can I just come and shake his hand? And so I said, thank you. I'm on it. I said, just keep praying for us. And now we are live streaming so that others that not part of New York can also view us all over the world. Amen. All over the world. Whatever there's internet access and they can see us. So we thank God for those who view with us this morning on live stream. God has blessed us. As you see, we're doing some things here at Union Grove. We're involved in some major projects around the church. We're making room for the growth, and we thank God for it. As you see, we've expanded the pulpit uh, because of live streaming. It makes it more clear when we uh, do it. And so I want to thank our Deacon Bobby Brick, Brother Griffin, and Brother Linwood, who built us a new area for our choir. Amen. Our choir stand. We thank our brother Joe Wine, our Deacon Patrick Crawford, and the music department for what they're doing, oh, amen. What they're doing. I want to thank our brother Val Day up there, our brother Glenn Major Jr., our brother George William, our sister Karen Chute out there working with the sound room, also working with the live streaming. And so we just we just thank God for all those who are working behind the scenes to help us grow this ministry. It's about the kingdom, and that's what the young lady preached about yesterday. You know, it's got to be about the kingdom. It's not about us. It's about the kingdom. Everything we do in the 21st century has to be about the kingdom. You know, me personally, I keep the building as it is. I keep things as it is. But when you try to expand the kingdom, we'll try to reach an area of individuals who have never stepped inside the church before. We have to come up with ways to reach their hearts, reach their minds. We have to find new ways to get them in these doors. And once we get them in the doors, we have to do our job in winning them over to the Lord. It's about the kingdom. It's about expanding the kingdom of God. And can I tell you today that when you try to expand the kingdom of God, the devil will come up with all kinds of ways to attack you, to take you out. I've been sick for the last two weeks, and I told the devil, he's a liar. I have authority over you. You can't stop me. You can't block me. I'm on the God assignment. And so we praise God for that. We pray God for the entrance. We pray God for what God is doing. You know, this sign is a reality that God is doing a new thing. I already believe it. I just need a few more witnesses. Amen. Amen. And then on Thursday, this coming Thursday, you know, I need you to show up. If, even if you're not in the district or in the area, I need you to show up. Those that are not going to retreat, um, I need you to show up at the debate there at the Abyssinian Baptist Church. As you know, I'm working along with Dr. Butts. I saw him yesterday working along with Dr. Butts. And they have uh, three candidates that are running for Charles Rango's seat. And we need those to go and be a support uh, to the debate. It is a very crucial debate. And the reason why I say very crucial debate is because all of Washington, D.C. are watching that area, that congressional area. They are, they are tuning in. And so they're going to have national coverage there. And so we would like for you to be there and help us in helping support the Harlem area. Our, our, our world is becoming crazy, and they're moving us out the way. Amen. They're pushing us. I don't want to say too much, but they're pushing us out the way. And so we have to stand up. And not only stand up, but we have to speak up so that we will get the victory out of the lives of our community. And then finally, um, I want to um, encourage those that can, my brothers and sisters, those that can. We have a banquet coming up. Uh, Reverend Marshall Boyd, he's retiring uh, from passing. Actually, he's retiring um, from this area, and we are asking those that can uh, support him. As you know, I always think about his support to Dr. Crawford and his personal support to me and what he meant to me personally and what he meant to Union Road. He was here on several occasions on homecoming day. He gave the best of service, and so I'm encouraging on April 26th that we need, we need some people to go and support us and help us to honor him on that day. Again, that's uh, April 26th. Those that can, those that have the finance and resource to do so, please support him on that day. Amen. I thank you, Deacon Bible, for the scripture reading this morning. God bless you. I thank God for our position, our Mel Fellowship Choir. And I thank you for being here at 8 o'clock for this worship experience. Thank you, Brianna, for messing up the bus schedule so your parents can be here. Amen. This morning. At this time, can we give it up for our Men Fellowship Choir? Can we give us another special? 
Amen. If you can talk you too far back, you ought to be up here with us. Amen. You ought to be up here with these other deacons. Amen. Amen. Come on, man, Fellowship Park. Give us another selection. Yeah! 
Got another yes? Do you have another one? Come on, do you have another one? You want to pray? You want to pray? Yes, Lord. Come on, man. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes,
Come below at this time. We ask that you take them out. Amen. Let us lift them up to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you this morning. We praise your name, O oh God, for the first Sunday in April. As we come to worship you, we worship you not only with our mouths and our hands and our feet, but we worship you with our giving, O oh God. We ask that you will bless each and every heart that gives to this ministry. It will suffer none, but get gain the more. Thank you, God, for what you're doing here, even now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we encourage our deacons to please assist us. We ask that you will, as the, as the trustees come to your role, that you will pass your clothes down. Amen. As the trustees come down your role, we ask that you will pass the clothes down. Amen. Bless you. At this time, I'm going to ask Mel Fellowship Bible saying, and then after that, I will come and give you the Lord has given unto me. And then we're going to our division service, and then be ready for our Sunday school. Amen. I'm in Fellowship Bible saying now, and then I will come after them. Thank you. 
series called Crucified Person. The first sermon we preached, we dealt with the crucified mind. Last week, we dealt with the crucified feet. Today, we want to deal with the crucified hand. Amen. We want to use as a backdrop scripture, Galatians 2 and 20, which simply said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Luke 24 and 40 simply says, and when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. John 20 and 27 said, then he said to Thomas, reach hither thy hand and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And not faithless or faithless, but believing. Amen. Today, again, we want to talk about the crucified hand. The crucified hand. My brothers and my sisters, it has been stated and documented that the hand is perhaps the most common part or the most useful part of the body. Many believe, those who are studying anatomy suggest that we use our hands more than any other part of the body. There are other that debate, that suggest, which I'm going to preach about next Sunday, the tongue is the most used part of the body, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. You have to come back next Sunday and hear that, but but some would argue that the tongue is the most used part of the body. But I like to think that we recognize that our hands are very valuable, that our hands are necessary. It helps us in doing the things that we need to do. And we know without a shadow of a doubt that Christ had some special hands. We think about Christ at early birth there in Bethlehem, Judah, 
uh, little baby hand being fondled by his mother and father. We know that he was surrounded by the wise men and those that were shepherding in the field. They played with those special hands. It would be those same hands that would reach out and comfort those who were sick and ill in. It would be those hands that would uh, break two little fishes and five loaves of bread and feed a multitude of 5,000 men beside women and children. It would be those hands that would stand up in the midst of a storm and tell the storm, stop, hush yourself, behave yourself, and the sea behave themselves. It would be these hands that would see a funeral procession leaving out the city of Maine. He would go by and just touch the casket. The one that was inside would rise up out of the casket and be restored back to life to his mother. It would be these hands, my brothers and sisters, uh, that would break bread for the last time and tell them, this is my broken body. Yes, it will be these hands that will fold up in prayer in the garden and say, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, let thy will be done. Can I tell you that Christ's hands are special? It was special in that they had to nail them to the cross. You do know that most crucifixion that took place at the time, they didn't have to really nail them. They could tie them up on the cross, but Christ's hands were so special that they had to nail them to the cross. And those hands are significant to us today because his hands made our hands special. Can I tell you that again? You know, his special hand became crucified hands so that our crucified hands can become special hands. And you ought to Value your hand. Crucified hands simply means you are careful how you handle the hands God gave you. The crucified hands suggest that you are very particular what you allow your hands to handle. It is told to me that a preacher, a pastor, happened to be going to the park to think and to relax his mind. And while at the park, he noticed, and this is a true story, he noticed that there was a man about 90 years old sitting in the park with his head down, just blazing at his hands. He did not know whether the man was okay because he stood there and looked at the man for a while, and the man did not move. He just stood locked and looking at his hand. And so this pastor happened to go by to sit down and figure about him sitting down. The movement would have caused this man to say something to him. When he sat down, made a little noise, the man did not move, constantly looking at his hand. He stood there, sat there rather for a while, trying to find out if the man was okay. He thought maybe the man was going into a coma, maybe he was having a stroke. He didn't know what was going on with the man. And finally, after sitting there for a few moments, he said, are you okay? The young man, the old man said, yes, I'm okay. He said, why do you ask? He said, I have been observing you. I first walked up and saw you looking at your hands. I sat here, you didn't move. I know that you're looking at your hand. He said, I just want to make sure you're okay. He said, have you ever thought about your hands? Have you ever looked at your hand? He said, take a look at your hand. So this pastor looked out and reached out and looked at his hand and couldn't understand what the old man was trying to get him to understand. He said, you know, I'm 80, he said, I'm 90 something years old. And he said, these hands has been through a lot. He said, these hands are now old, they're wrinkled, they're shriveled, they are weak. He said, but these hands have done a lot of things over the years. He said, these hands have went off to war and fight for our country. These same hands have wiped the tears of soldiers, parents, and family members who got lost in the war. These hands escorted my children down the aisle when they got married. These hands made a powerful living for me and my family. These same hands buried my parents 
and my wife and took them to the grave. He said, these hands are weak and they're withered, but these hands have served me over the years. He said, at an early age, my mama took my hands and folded them and taught me how to pray. My mother took my hand and taught me how to wash my face and tie my shoes. These hands have served over the years, and now I look at my hands and wonder, have I done everything I possibly could have done with these hands? He said, I've discovered that the Lord is coming back for me, and I want you to know he's not coming back to see my title, to see my degrees. He's not coming back to see what I have done uh, with my knowledge and education. He's coming back to see what I've done with my hands. He said, my brothers and sisters, he said, you ought to make sure that whatever you do, you do it for the master. And I stop by to tell you, every now and then, you ought to look at your hands and make sure that your hands is on an assignment. I want you to think for a moment, if you will, would you uh, go to the most famous restaurant here in New York City and order your steak of your choice. You know how you like to have it trimmed. Would you enjoy uh, that server coming and bringing you a steak? All the trimmings on it, whether you like potatoes, whether you like french fries, whether you like mashed potatoes and collard greens or whatever you like aside with it. Would you appreciate the server coming with a nice smelling steak and their hands are dirty? You can look at their nails and there's some stuff under their nails. You can see their hands coming and you can see there's some stuff that ain't right on their hands. Uh, would you appreciate your meal if they served it and you can smell that something is not right with their hands? You know that their hands have been in some places it ought not to have been. Would you be satisfied if you can smell the smoke on the hand or perhaps grief on the hand? Would you be satisfied if you smelt them hand and it smelt like they had Budweiser or Coke 44 or some other kind of mixed drink on the hand? Would you be satisfied, my brothers and sisters, if you smelt the hand and it didn't smell right? Would you be satisfied knowing that they walked the dog and wiped up the dog with their bare hands and came and served you with your mouth? How would you feel if you knew the hand been some places it had not been? Uh, my brothers and sisters, that's how God feels about our hands. Our hands have been some places. It ought not have been. It had done some things it should not have done. God feels the same thing that when you bring your hand and try to lift them up in church. He knows where your hands have been. Now, my brother and sister, you try to get on your knees and pray before him and he watches what your hand did all night long. You picked up that wine bottle. You picked up that Coke 44. You walk around with cigarettes in your hand and now you want to lift them holding hand. Your hand stinks before God. God cannot enjoy his appetite. He cannot enjoy your your aroma. He cannot enjoy your prayer because your hands are dirty. Your hands are stinking. My brother and sister, what I'm trying to tell you today, you need to have your hand crucified. You need to have your hand washed. Can I tell you today that Jesus was so concerned about your hand? He said, if your hand offend you, uh, he said, cut it off uh, because he wants you to come uh, with your hands crucified. And can I tell you today that when your hands are crucified, you ain't got time to push people down. Uh, you can learn how to pick people up. Uh, when your hands are crucified, uh, you'll stop stabbing people in the back uh, and learn how to encourage them. Uh, have a got a witness. Uh, when your hands are crucified, my brothers and sisters, uh, when you get in the holy sanctuary, uh, if you can't say one word, uh, you'll know how to just wave, uh, wave your hand. Uh, your hands ought to be crucified uh, because you've got work for the master. Uh, it's almost evening time. Uh, the sun is almost going down. Uh, is there anybody here today uh, that need their hand in the hand of the man uh, from Galilee? Uh, i got news for you. Uh, if your hands are crucified, uh, they are crucified in Christ. Uh, and you'll do the master work. Uh, I'm blind. Uh, I gave my hand. Uh, I gave my hand to Jesus uh, and gave my heart to Jesus as well. Uh, my hand uh, is an instrument for Jesus. Uh, my hand uh, is an instrument for the Lord. Uh, if I can help somebody uh, as I travel uh, along the way, uh, then my living. God bless you. God bless you real good. Amen. Don't want to go over time. But I feel all right. I said I feel all right. My hands been washed in the blood of him. Thank God for my hands. Thank God for my hand. I got up this morning and looked at my hand. My hand looked new because there's something on the inside working.
God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Come back at another clock. We're finished. Amen. Thank God for those who are here today. Would you stand? I see my good friends there from Toronto Baptist Church in Manhattan here this morning. Thank you so much for stopping by the 8 o'clock service. But there may be someone here that came and do not know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Don't want to take it for granted. Don't want to take it by chance that you are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. We do not know who you are today, but we want to extend to you an opportunity to come and to share with us on today. If you're here today, would you come? If there's one today that's seeking membership, seeking baptism, just want to be a part of God's family, you're welcome to come at this time. Amen. If you're here, amen. If you're here today, would you come? Again, we don't want to take it for granted. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God just before we do our communion. I know we're running just a little bit behind schedule, but I want my cousin to come and bring greetings at this time. Amen. We thank God for him being here from Dayton, Ohio. Amen. 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 We had a great shop there in Dayton, Ohio, entrepreneur, and we thank God for him this morning. Amen. My first cousin, we thank God for him. Amen. That's our, uh, many of you know, Sister Marie Dinkins. Amen. Uh, that's, that's her brother there. You can curly crop it. That's her brother there. Amen. We're glad for him to come and share with us. Next time, Dinkins will come. Amen. Dinkins, would you come? Let us be ready now. Amen. We encourage all those who have been born again, washing the blood of the Lamb of Christ, to take on communion with us today. Amen. I'm going to Amen. Ask that our brother Lerone Crawford will come now, along with Brother Glover and Dr. Dave will come and lead us in this part of our community service.